Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel Dentistry to the Point. So in this video we are going to today discuss about oral submucous fibrosis. Now oral submucous fibrosis being the most common pre-malignant condition seen in people who consume oral form of tobacco along with supadi, erica nut or lime who consume more amount of spicy food. The people with genetic predisposition, nutritional deficiency, autoimmune problems these are the various etiopathological factors of this condition but mainly the people who consume erica nut with tobacco are at risk so starting first we will discuss about the definition of oral submucous fibrosis so before starting the definition i would like to suggest you guys the video which i have made regarding dental awareness the risk factors of oral cancer along with that maine usme oral submucous fibrosis ke context mein bhi explain kiya hai so please share that video to all your friends and families so that even they get the knowledge about this topic and stop the people who are consuming so now let's start with oral submucous fibrosis so firstly it is an insidious chronic disease kya hai ek chronic disease it is not an acute disease nahi hai ki turant ho jayegi it is a chronic disease which is going to take time affecting any part of the oral cavity that means oral cavity ke koi bhi part ko affect कर सकती है समटाइम्स फेरिंग्स ऑल्सो इज अफेक्टेड नाउ दिस इज द फर्स्ट सेंटेंस देखो ये डेफिनेशन को समझ के जितना आप याद करोगे उतना वो जल्दी याद हो जाएगी और भूलने के चांसेस कम रहेंगे बट इफ यू ट्राई टू मग अप दिस डेफिनेशन इट इज नॉट एट ऑल यूजफुल सो फर्स्टली इंसिडियस क्रोनिक डिजीज अफेक्टिंग एनी पार्ट ऑफ द ओरल कैविटी समटाइम्स फेरिंग्स दिस इज योर फर्स्ट सेंटेंस नेक्स्ट ऑल दो ओकेजनली समटाइम्स इट इज प्रिसीडेड बाई दैट मीन सब उसके पहले ये डिजीज होने से पहले और एसोसिएटेड विथ वेसाइकल फॉर्मेशन नाउ दिस डिजीज होने से पहले या इस डिजीज के होते होते द पेशेंट इज गोइंग टू शो वेसाइकल फॉर्मेशन इन द ओरल कैविटी सो ऑल दो ओकेजनली प्रिसीडेड बाई और एसोसिएटेड विथ वेसाइकल फॉर्मेशन इट इज ऑलवेज एसोसिएटेड ऑलवेज नॉट ओकेजनली द वेसाइकल फॉर्मेशन वर नॉट सीन इन ऑल द केसेस बट दिस it is always associated with juxta epithelial inflammation now what is the meaning of juxta epithelial that means something which is nearer to epithelium epithelium ke layer ke just pass mein you will always see inflammation so juxta epithelial inflammatory reaction followed by fibroelastic changes that means there are going to be changes in the fibroblast jo bhi fibroblast compartment rahega usme changes rahenge so fibroelastic changes of lamina Propria, but obviously ki lamina propria is going to have fibroblast that is the loose connective tissue layer beneath the basement membrane of epithelium. So fibroelastic changes kis mein hai lamina propria mein with epithelial atrophy jo upar epithelium mein uski atrophy ho jayegi leading to stiffness of oral mucosa. In sab ke karan kya hoga? There will be more of fibroblast and fibrous band at last in this condition. So the, due to that there will be stiffness of oral mucosa kya hoga oral mucosa will become stiff causing trismus and inability to eat we'll revise this once again let's start from the first insidious chronic disease hai affecting any part of the oral cavity sometimes it also affects the pharynx so this is the first one second although occasionally preceded by or associated with vesical formation pehle to insidious chronic disease hai jo kahi bhi affect kar sakti hai oral cavity mein kabhi kabhi pharynx ko सेकेंड पॉइंट इज कभी कभी या तो एक कंडीशन होने से पहले वेसाइकल बन जाएंगे या उसके साथ साथ वेसाइकल फॉर्मेशन इज सीन सो ऑल दो ओकेजनली प्रिसीडेड बाय और एसोसिएटेड विथ वेसाइकल फॉर्मेशन एंड ऑलवेज एसोसिएटेड विथ जक्सटा एपिथिलियम एपिथिलियम के पास में जक्सटा एपिथिलियल इन्फ्लामेटरी रिएक्शन इसके कारण क्या होगा फाइब्रो इलास्टिक चेंजेस होंगे किसमें लेमिना प्रोप्रिया में विथ एपिथिलियल एट्रोफी जिसके कारण क्या होगा स्टिफनेस ऑफ ओरल म्यूकोज एंड कॉजिंग क्रिसमस एंड इनबिलिटी टू ईट सो इस डेफिनेशन को चार से पांच बार आप जैसे ही देखोगे समझोगे गाइस श्योरली आर नॉट गोइंग टू फोगेट दिस डेफिनेशन सो नेक्स्ट देर आर सम पॉइंट द इंट्रोडक्टरी पॉइंट ऑफ दिस सुश्रुता ए ग्रीक मेडिकल प्रैक्टिशनर इन हिज बुक सुश्रुत संहिता he mentioned about this disorder and he named this as vidari so this is just an general information though it was first described among the east african women these east african women were of indian origin so it was termed as atrophia idiopathica mucosae oris kya hai atrophia idiopathica mucosae 
or is by Schwartz in 1952. There are also various other synonyms of this disorder like oral submucous fibrosis of palate and pillars, idiopathic scleroderma of mouth, submucosal fibrosis of palate and cheek, idiopathic palatal fibrosis, juxtra epithelial fibrosis, Asian siderophenic dysphagia and lastly this name which was given by Pindbock that is oral submucosal fibrosis so this is just a basic introduction about osmf so next moving on to the etiology of oral submucous fibrosis there are various factors responsible for the occurrence of osmf but it is considered as a multifactorial disease there are various factors involved so the various factors like chilies first one is chilies or spicy food now this contain capsaicin which is the compound responsible for the irritation in the oral mucosa now capsaicin is vanillyl amide of 8 methyl 6 non anic acid if you can't remember then there is no compulsion but aapko capsaicin yaad rakhna which is the main compound in chilies now this is one second is tobacco tobacco in both the forms that is smoke form and the smokeless or oral form of tobacco is responsible we guys are well aware of the smokeless forms of tobacco that is pan, gutka, then zarda, khani, mava, manipuri tobacco. There are various forms and smoke and smoke form of tobacco also we are aware that is BD, cigarette, cigar, hookah and all. So these tobacco contain also one compound that is responsible for the occurrence of oral cancer in future that is n nitroso nor nicotine. Now this nicotine is going to react with saliva present in our mouth and it will result in the formation of this compound that is n nitroso nor nicotine and along with this there are also various other compounds which are responsible for the occurrence of oral cancer. Third one is lime or the chuna which you say that now lime is obtained from limestone. Kis se milega? It is obtained from limestone so it is going to contain calcium oxide and calcium hydroxide both the compounds which cause again the local irritation of oral mucosa resulting in ulceration and vesicle formation in the mucosa it also provides direct entry for the carcinogens into the mucosa because there will be ulceration that is breach in the continuity right so this breach in the continuity will help the carcinogens to penetrate in the oral Mucosa. Now, ye to ho gaya apne teen form that is chilies, tobacco and lime. Now, the main causative agent or the main culprit behind this is considered as areca nut or betel nut you can say. So, this or supadi mainly if you want in a simpler language areca nut can also be called as supadi. Now, this areca nut contains three things that is alkaloids, flavonoids and some various other compounds. So firstly the various alkaloids present in areca nut are erecoline, erecadine, erecalidine, guacoline, guava cane and isoguava cane. So these are the alkaloids which cause the synthesis of collagen or increased synthesis of collagen. They are going to promote the synthesis of collagen that is fibers or they are going to stimulate the fibroblast in total. Now second is flavonoids. Now flavonoids are two that is tannic acid and catechol. They are going to increase the stabilization of collagen. These are going to form. Ye kya karenge? Collagen form karenge. Aur ye collagen ki stability badayenge. That means they will not allow the degradation of collagen fibers. Jo timely degradation hona chahiye collagen fibers ka. That is not going to Akar. So, what will happen is that collagen will increase and one will not collagen ko degrade. Nahi hone so, this will result in fibrosis in the oral mucosa. So, this is the main mechanism behind oral submucous fibrosis that one compound is going to form collagen in increased amount and another will not allow the degradation of collagen. Right. So, this is about areca nut. Next is genetic predisposition. There are various genes or target genes considered in oral submucosal fibrosis that is collagen or COL1, A2, COL3, A1 if you can't remember it's okay but try to remember they are asked sometimes they can be asked in PG entrance examination COL6, A1 and A3 and lastly COL7, 
A1. Then next is the nutritional deficiency. Now nutritional deficiency can also be considered that patient जिसको oral submucosal fibrosis हुआ है, उसके बाद is not able to consume food and he is having deficiency. So there are also various questions on this etiology, but the patients with OSMF have been seen with vitamin B complex deficiency and also microcytic hypochromic anemia due to defective iron metabolism. So these are the two nutritional points associated with OSMF that is vitamin B complex deficiency या तो वो they are not able to consume food so they are facing this deficiency after the occurrence of disease that is not clear and there is no evidence found regarding microcytic hypochromic anemia in relation with OSMF right so these are the two factors this still remains a controversy next is autoimmunity so the patient with OSMF have been seen with increased levels of IgG, immunoglobin G, immunoglobin A and M. So these three immunoglobins are increased in the patients with oral submucosal fibrosis. Along with that the patient is also seen with circulating autoantibodies. So the presence of this immunoglobin indicates that there is some antigenic stimulus in absence of bacterial infection, no infection, nahi, then also there is some antigenic stimulus which is resulting in the release of this immunoglobin and also circulating autoantibodies. So this is in relation with autoimmunity in relation to the submucosal fibrosis and lastly collagen disorders. Now we, the investigators have considered that collagen disorders is or scleroderma is a bit similar to oral submucosal fibrosis or it is associated or it is having some findings which is similar to scleroderma that OSMF is having some findings similar to scleroderma that is in histological section so even scleroderma is associated with OSMF in some of the other ways so these are the various etiological factors considered regarding oral submucosal fibrosis so next moving on to the discussion of etiopathogenesis of oral submucosal fibrosis upon subsequently start karenge erica nut seki jovi person who is consuming erica nut will be exposed to the compounds like alkaloids and flavonoids present in the erica nut so due to this alkaloids and flavonoids there will be constant irritation in the mucosa due to this constant irritation there will be chronic inflammation in the oral mucosa which will result in the increase of cytokines jahan bhi chronic inflammation hoga cytokines increase honge uske saath saath growth factor bhi increase honge now which will which are these cytokines that is interleukin 6 tumor necrosis factor and interferon alpha so these are the cytokines and there is one growth factor that is transforming growth factor beta TGFB. Now due to this all the cytokines and growth factor there will be two things happening. First we already discussed that the base mechanism of oral submucosal fibrosis can ki one side there will be increase in collagen production. Second side there will be decrease in collagen degradation. So kya hoga? There will be more of fibrosis in oral mucosa which will lead to oral submucosal Fibrosis. So now the how collagen degradation, how will the collagen degradation decrease? First we will see that and then we will see how is there going to be increase in the production of collagen. So firstly there will be two factors, two things released that is tissue inhibiting matrix metalloproteinases and plasminogen activator inhibitor. Right, plasminogen activator inhibitor and tissue inhibitory metalloproteinases. Now then due to these two factors there is decrease in the collagenase activity. Now what is collagenase? Collagenase, collagenase is an enzyme which is used to break the collagen and degrade the collagen. Now due to this decrease in the collagenase, collagenase ki activity kya hui? Come away. So indirectly kya hua? There will be more of collagen remaining in the oral mucosa because they are not being degraded. There is no phagocytosis of collagen. Occurring. So due to this there will be decreased collagen degradation. We will again start there are two factors that is tissue inhibitor matrix metalloproteinases and increase in plasminogen activator inhibitor. Due to this there will be decrease in collagenase activity which will in turn decrease the collagen degradation. On the other side there will be increase in 
प्रोकोलाइजिन प्रोकोलाइजिन क्या होगा बढ़ेगा नॉट ड्यू टू दिस इंक्रीज इन प्रोकोलाइजिन देयर विल बी इंक्रीज कोलाइजिन प्रोडक्शन सो बोथ ऑफ दीस विल कंट्रीब्यूट एंड लास्ट एट लास्ट दे विल फॉर्म ओरल सब म्यूकोसल फाइब्रोसिस आई होप सो गाइस आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग नाउ दिस प्लाज्मिनोजन एक्टिवेटर इनहिबिटर क्या करेगा इट इज गोइंग टू हेल्प इन एक्टिवेशन ऑफ प्लाज्मिनोजन बट देयर इज नॉट अभी प्लाज्मिनोजन एक्टिवेटर इनहिबिटर क्या करेगा कि ये इट इज गोइंग टू इनहिबिट द एक्टिवेशन ऑफ प्लाज्मिनोजन टू प्लाज्मिन एंड इन टर्न प्लाज्मिन इज गोइंग टू हेल्प प्रो कोलेजिनेस टू गेट कन्वर्टेड टू कोलेजिनेस सो अगर देयर विल बी नो प्लाज्मिन देन देयर विल बी नो कन्वर्जन ऑफ प्रो कोलेजिनेस टू कोलेजिनेस दैट्स व्हाई देयर इज डिक्रीज इन कोलेजिनेस एक्टिविटी एंड हियर देयर इज ड्यू टू प्रो कोलेजिन देयर इज इंक्रीज इन द कोलेजिन production so this is clear right that how are the fibers form on the other side there is also degradation of muscle now just consider a case who, who is already having osmf the patient is already having osmf then also he continues chewing the beta there are then there are going to be two things happening first is vascular obliteration and decrease in the blood supply and on the other side there will be muscular over activity or over activity of muscles which will lead to depletion of glycogen in turn leading to fatigueness of muscle at last degeneration of muscle leading to fibrosis and scarring of muscle for you guys this is the main pathway which you need to remember from alkaloids to oral submucosal fibrosis i hope so you guys have understood the etiopathogenesis of osmf in the next part we'll discuss about the clinical features histological features and treatment regarding this condition if you enjoyed the video then please like share and subscribe our channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get regular updates of our lectures thank you